Hello everyone, I am Priyanka Patel and today I am going to explain about glass as packaging material for parental products. Let's see, learning objectives of this video. Learners will be able to understand types of glass, properties and application of different types of glass for parental formulation. So start with introduction. What is meaning of uh, packaging material first of all? So, packaging material are economical means of providing presentation, protection, identification information, containment, convenience and compliance for a product during storage, carriage, display and until the product is consumed. If we consider for parental formulation, there are mainly three types of packaging material we use that is glass, plastic and rubber. In this video, we are mainly going to discuss about glass and its type and its property. So, glass is an amorphous solid material which is usually brittle and optically transparent. So, what are properties of glass? It offers sufficient inertness to minimize product interaction. It is also impermeable to prevent ingress of containment from atmosphere. It is stable at the temperature which is needed for sterilization, depyrogenation as well as for lyophilization of frozen storage. So, sterilization and depyrogenation is the principal quality control parameter for sterile formulation and glass can withstand with the temperature of the both as well as it can also withstand with the temperature of lyophilization process. Another advantage is it is transparent, so allow product inspection. Second one is for the product which are light sensitive. So in that case, coloration of glass is possible by adding iron oxide. Iron oxide can make glass amber color in nature, so it can provide protection for light sensitive formulation. And another advantage of glass is it is available in different style and size readily in a market so at reasonable cost. So that is also advantage for glass material. Let's see composition of glass. Glasses are inorganic silicates produced by melting and then cooled without crystallization to solid state. The basic structure of silicate glass consists of tetrahedral form of silica. So, each silicon atom is shared a bond with four oxygen atom and each oxygen atom has shared bond with two silicon atom. So, that makes cross-linked 3D network of shared covalent bond and because of that spatial configuration of bond increase in a viscosity due to decrease in a temperature and that increase viscosity with reduction in a temperature prevent arrangement of molecules during solidification and it prevents crystallization. So, material gets solidified without crystallization in a random manner as that of the liquid state. So, basically glass is not a crystallized solid state. We can perform crystallization at specific temperature condition of silica and it is called as the quartz. Glass is principally made up of silica with varying concentration of calcium, sodium, aluminium, barium, boric, potassium and magnesium oxides. Next is types of glass. According to United States Pharmacopoeia, glasses can be divided into four types. Type 1 glass is called as borosilicate glass. Type 2 is treated soda lime glass. Type 3 is plain soda lime glass and type 4 is non parental glass. Mainly in this video, we are going to discuss about type 1 to type 3 glass. As type 4 is considered as non parental glass and it can be used for products that are for topical use or oral dosage form. So, we are not going to discuss it over here. So, type 1 glass mainly used for parental products which contain strong acid and alkali preparation. Type 2 is suitable for acidic and neutral aqueous preparation whether parenteral or non-parenteral. Type 3, it is for non-aqueous preparation, powder for parenteral use, 
with exception of freeze dried preparation so start with first type of class borosilicate class type 1 class is composed of mainly silicon dioxide boric oxide and low level of non network forming oxides type 1 glass is considered as the most stable glass or glass which is having a least leaching ability so why borosilicate glass is considered as the most stable glass because it mainly consists of boric oxide which has tendency to enter into a structure and most of the other oxide they do not have tendency to get entrapped into a structure they remain loosely bound into a structure into network space and they are relatively free to migrate and this oxide may be leached into a solution in contact with the glass during in increased temperature in thermal sterilization leaching process is a diffusion of control ion exchange process involve exchange of hydrogen ion for alkali ion present in the glass and the result is increase in a solution ph so because of tendency of boric oxide to remain entrapped into a structure it easily does not leach into a solution and because of that it is considered as the most stable glass another properties of borosilicate glass is it has generally higher melting temperature than ordinary glass its thermal expansion coefficient is low in comparison to the ordinary glass it is considered as a solid at temperature less than 500 degrees celsius another property is it is more resistant to thermal shock so this is about type 1 glass next is type 2 soda lime treated glass why type 2 and type 3 glass are called as soda lime glass because in raw material oxides are typically supplied as soda ash that is sodium carbonate and limestone that is calcium carbonate so type 2 and type 3 are called as soda lime glass what is basic difference between type 2 and type 3 glass so composition of type 2 and type 3 is almost same as you can see in the diagram but the basic difference is treatment type 2 glass is treated to reduces the migratory oxide in comparison to type 3 so type 2 is considered as more stable glass in comparison to the type 3 glass so with what treatment is done for type 2 so generally sulfur oxide or a sulfur trioxide gas is used for the treatment or ammonium sulfate pellets or a solution may be injected into containers so because of that at elevated temperature presence of water vapor leads to formulation of sulfuric acid which reacts with the alkaline ions on the glass surface and form salt residue and that can be readily removed by rinsing prior to the use so that treatment reduces leaching ability of migratory ions like calcium oxide or sodium oxide and that's why type 2 it is considered as more stable in comparison to the type 3 glass so removal of alkaline ion from inner surface in this way significantly reduces level of alkali available for leaching into drug after filling and during sterilization process what are other properties of type 2 glass so it is considered as softer in comparison to type 1 it is having higher thermal expansion coefficient in comparison to type 1 no melting point in comparison to type 1 it is also cheaper than type 1 glass when we need light protection glass can be converted into amber color glass by addition of ferric oxide into it so which will absorb the uv radiation and provide light protection to the formulation type 2 glass is considered as stable than type 3 glass next is type 3 soda lime glass so as we discussed type composition of type 2 and type 3 glass is almost same it mainly consists of silicon oxides aluminum potassium boron and calcium oxide and which is untreated and has average chemical resistance it is alkaline glass having high percentage of lime and soda and no or less boric oxide as compared to type 1 glass it is moderately hydrolytic resistance or limited 
alkalinity. Next is glass leachables and extractables. Mostly all types of glass has tendency to leach alkaline matter when they are exposed at high temperature and pressure condition during sterilization and depyrogenation process. So these are some basic concept which is applied for glass leachables. Relatively low levels of leachable at pH 4 to 8. High level of pH leachables at pH greater than 9. Major extractable includes silicon, sodium and boron and minor extractables include potassium, barium, calcium, aluminium depending upon the specific glass formulation. Fresh extractable includes iron, magnesium and zinc and treated glass gives less extractable if pH is less than 8 although there is always the possibility of having sulphate leachables. So depending upon the leachability and extractability glasses are selected for the final formulation. So according to that type 1 glass is suitable for all types of product. It is parental, non-parental or strong acid or a strong base because it is considered as a stable glass. And if, as type 1 glass is considered as costlier in comparison to the other types of glass, sometimes treatment is done for type 2 glass and it can be used in place of type 1 glass. Type 2 glass is suitable for solution that is buffered and has pH below 7 or is non-reactive with the glass. Type 3 glass is usually suitable for principally for anhydrous liquid or dry substances. So with this, I conclude my video and in next video, I am going to explain about quality control test for glass according to the pharmacopoeial method. Thank you everyone for watching my video.